Dear Diary, today I take the next step, the next step in being an ADHD life coach at Indigo Hub. I can't believe it's happening. I want to build, create and discover a place for us to truly be ourselves. I think this journey will be... Shh, the Indigo Diary. Dear Diary, welcome world. Welcome to the Indigo Diaries and welcome series three, The World Through Our Eyes with your host me, Tasha Hicklin. The Indigo Diaries is a podcast for those who want to learn about ADHD through others and our own experiences. So this week, really excited to have, it's not just me that you'll probably be happy to hear. I've got some more experts coming on the season this year, really, really starting 2023 off with a bang. And I love it. I love it when I have experts, but I also love it when I know them personally. And I see this stuff online and I'm always really inspired to have a conversation with people. And really, so I'm really, really excited to get our new guest on for starting the conversation where we just start a conversation on topic and interest, dive deep into it. And as like ADHD, just see where it goes. So welcome, Pippa. Thank you so much for having me, Natasha. I'm excited to be here too. Good. So let me tell you a bit about Pippa. She has a professional background in secondary education with over 20 years of experience. In 2016, to achieve further flexibility to support her own neurodiverse children, she joined a local charity as a coach and trainer, working to support parents, professionals who live or have children who have ADHD and ASD. And now she has heightened then and saw that there's a bit of a huge lack of understanding and services for women with this condition. So that's where she started ADD Vantage. And now she supports people and women in the community. She also personally has two children, now teenagers, live with them and, and her husband, as well as their cockapoo, Oscar. She loves baking theatre, cinema socialising, eating out, rambling, love that, travelling and exploring new places. If you want the full bio, please look below. So, Pippa, tell me, kind of, you, you talked a lot about your own neurodiverse kind of experience. Tell me a bit more about that. Well, um, it was discovered late, Natasha. <laughs> um, it was discovered uh, in my mid forties. I'm almost fifty now, so it's a, a a relatively recent discovery. It's not that I didn't know I was different. I did know that always, but I just thought I was a bit crap, a bit rubbish, a bit less, not trying hard enough, um, needed to do better, a bit average, a bit less than average. Um, so. ADHD showed up on our radar as a family through my son and when I compared myself to him I would have said well definitely not I definitely am not like that so if he was my measure stick then I would have said no of course not definitely not plus I was a professional and in my unschooled mind I thought people with ADHD are not professionals they are crazy people who are running amok and uh, I don't know, causing chaos wherever they go. And I was a teacher and I don't know, it felt quite sensible, you know, sensible yeah. job. Um, so it was a it was a, a, a kind of a coincidence, act of God, however you want to call it. Um, thankfully, because um, when it did show off on our radar family, I became an ADHD nerd, did lots of reading, uh, went to conferences, met lots of people, uh, as you do, bought books, read them. And uh, it was my... Um, special interest shall we say um, and I came across um, some people that have got some software that do object objective measures of course yeah. symptoms and I thought oh that'd be terribly good for the charity I work for I'll go and see them and I did and they gave me a little chat and said do you want to try it and I was like oh yeah I'll try it that'd be so interesting and I tried it then I got the results and it was like oh really that and it was very high Natasha that was I think you know it's not like I didn't know I struggled with attention or I didn't know I was impulsive but I didn't realize how much I was compared to women of my age which is what software did and then I was like bloody hell I'm oh, sorry um excuse me um <laughs> sorry I was like goodness me how could I have got to this age worked in education have a kid with ADHD train professionals on ADHD and not know that about myself mm. and that's what made me start the advantage because I was like that is shocking Pippa that that could have happened um, and it led me to my daughter as well who'd been basically ignored because uh, she was nothing like him but a lot yeah. like me so now I was like oh no <laughs> I missed her 
But I, I love what you, I love the, uh, the, the, say bloody hell, whatever you want to say on here, that's fine. Uh, but it's, I love that honesty of like, it, you know, in the perceived way, it's this boy that does this and that mm. and this. But for you, until you got that test, it was like, oh my, this is actually shows up for you. Yeah, literally. Uh, it was really, uh, in a way, it was lovely because it felt like, oh my gosh, we're the same. Like we're in, the, we're in, we are this. We are in this gang together. Um, I obviously I did know it was inherited, and I said obviously he'd get it from their dad. Um, but then it was like, oh gosh, wow, we have come together, me and their dad. We we've, we've been drawn to each other. We have had these children, and we are all the same. I will say a disclaimer on my husband's behalf, though, because uh, he's still in denial uh, unless he's in a queue at an airport or in the hospital waiting in A&E. And then he says he's got ADHD because he's like, I need to get out of here. But anyway, we're the same. So actually it was it was a shock, but it was kind of like, oh, we're the same. And also massive relief because it's like, wow, there's a reason. Oh, okay then. I was never built. I was never made or designed to do these things this way. That's why they're really hard for me. So doesn't make those things go away but it felt like oh I don't have to try to do you know I can stop forcing myself to try harder and do better and what have you so it was it was um it was a relief yeah yeah and I really like that that you, that you say that it you know it was a relief and and the way you said about each other like it's a way of an understanding of us all together mm. and it, it's like we're in this club like we this it makes so much sense we don't have to try and force ourselves to live the way that everybody else lives exactly and yeah stuff. yeah it gives you permission to be the person you were made you know this is this is who I was made to be so better I lean into that and live my best life like I was made to yeah and stop sort of punishing myself and berating myself all internally of course because if anyone had ever looked at me they would have been like oh, yeah she's so organized not knowing the thousand and million steps I've had to do to actually get there to achieve that yeah I love how you like had to like breathe in to do that because it, <laughs> just thinking about all that of like you know people think like oh you're so organized it's like well you didn't see what how what the the, the panic or the stress yes. you know I've put my makeup on since then you know you've not seen an hour ago when I was punching exactly. down the walls and yeah and screaming how many times have I gone back into my house to get the stuff I've forgotten or turned around in the car because I've not got the thing you know whatever it is and um yeah yeah so obviously like that obviously then gave you the the passion for ADHD advantage mm. what is it that you feel is kind of missing or with kind of women or girls in ADHD um I think things are improving um that the, the message is getting out in the last couple of awareness months um people like the BBC the Guardian some big um sort of media publications have started to talk about um, how for women and girls largely not always there's it, the symptoms are internalized so they are not observable but they are incredibly hard to live with um, and I I feel so passionate about um, because I, I know what that is I know what that is to carry that to hide that to mask that the exhausting um, internal dialogue all the time um, I know what that is and I want anyone else that's living that way to recognize that, understand it, know what's going on for them. So that's the first thing to sort of, to be able to um, enable people to, to recognize it in themselves. And then secondly, that it is appreciated as a difference, not a disorder. So it isn't without its difficulties, no. obviously, and I'm not saying it's a superpower either, but there are advantages to this brain definitely we're still here Tash we're still going you know like <laughs> we've made it through these thousands of years and evolution if you mm. sign up for that you know survival of the fittest here are our genes still going strong so there's a purpose for us and I want people to um, embrace that and um, and lean in into the purpose that they were made for using their ADHD to sort of fuel them power them forward I think um I talk I, the phrase I, I I always say it's about living living well with ADHD if I'm talking about what my goal is with my clients I say it's to live well 
to live well with ADHD. That's what yeah. I'm yeah. trying to do. I really like that. I, I heard someone say the other day, it's like living life on your terms versus everybody else's. Yeah. And it, it's yeah. like that thing of it's not, it is great sometimes, but it is really difficult. Mm. And so what, like you were talking about those internal challenges, I really think it's quite important. Like what do you notice from your own experience and from your clients, like and people around in your environment, like what are those internal challenges for women? I think it is the, um, we, we are literally our own worst enemy. Like it's our, so one characteristic of the ADHD, this I think is true male and female, is we are fabulous friends. Oh my days. Like if you are lucky enough to have us as a friend, you've made it. Like we are the most generous, compassionate, empathetic people, so giving, but that we cannot seem to reflect that back in on ourselves and when I think of the way I have spoken to myself I would never ever utter that utter utter those things out loud to another human being to an animal to an inanimate object I would just would not even speak those words out loud um and that's that's the the um that's the the biggest thing it's it's our um in um self-talk it's our it's our self-talk it's it's that and this constant voice of you need to try harder you need to do better you need to buy a new planet you need to set your watch five minutes for whatever you know it, there's constant search for the thing you know that what you know uh, the supplement the 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 planner <laughs> whatever it is the thing the set but no no there's not a thing there's only learning who I actually am and and loving loving that woman or girl loving that girl or woman like I do my friends like what you know that's what I want that's what I you know I think that that's that's it we are um we are we just berate ourselves and throw hot coal all over us for for things that um and it because it's it does tend to be the simple things that trip us up you know like isn't it like we're, we're like we could write books we could you know, um, in, invent stuff, problem solve, and and can we be on time? No. <laughs> or, you know, did we get our dates muddled? Yesterday, oh, it's so embarrassing. Yesterday I had a discovery call and I opened next week's discovery call and I'm thinking, where is this woman? Goodness me, she's late. <laughs> and I went to write the email and then this, the right woman. Had, <laughs> I'm in the meeting, but it says you need to let me in. And I'm like, no, I'm in the meeting. Oh, no. <laughs> but previously so so I, I opened the meeting I was honest I did so I might have previously lied and gone oh well it was software oh it was the wi-fi uh I can possibly admit but yesterday yeah. I went into that meeting I was like I am really sorry this is what I did apologies she laughed forgave me of course and I felt safe to, mm. to say that but I wouldn't I wouldn't have done previously I know I would have lied <laughs> or you know whatever ran or yeah or, or yeah. Saw the, yeah and then that's the thing isn't it when you face those internal challenges and when you start being your own friend you can start to be honest I literally had a similar experience yesterday where I had a coaching session in person and I prepared everything the night before it's my first ever coaching session in person I prepared everything oh, cool. and I was meant to take my tablet and I was literally sat with a client two minutes before I needed to leave with that tablet and I left the tablet at home and I got there and they were like I, I got all my stuff I got it all out I was like where's my tablet oh like, no. one thing that I had to prepare in the moment versus before and I forgot it and it's that thing of going do you know what I forgot my tablet let's get a pen and paper out we'll see yeah how we go. that's so, it yeah. yeah just being yeah being being authentic and and knowing that 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 is okay like people the, the beauty of the work we do Tash is that we come you know like we work with brilliant amazing people all day long that will totally relate and forgive us for those things because of the the, the the because of what we bring because of what we bring which is if not the tablet it is our brilliant self we bring that to our work and and that's that's worth waiting five or ten minutes in the wrong meeting or oh dear we're having to write on paper isn't it I think yeah, yeah. and we and I always found that we plant the seeds to help to clients to do that for themselves yeah and I, I really like that honesty there about the women, like you be your own friend because mm. we are great friends. But I yeah. find that so many of my clients, they give more to friends mm. and give so much more 
yeah. and we even have the capacity for ourselves yeah it is I think I do think that is a female trait in particular mm. I think that that I, I really notice that with the women and the girls that I work with too um and I I in obviously it's a great quality to be generous yeah. and compassionate and empathetic but I think the worry for me particularly with the girls is that um there's it's it it can slip into people pleasing yeah. and they can lose we're in danger of losing ourselves and our needs and our preferences mm-hmm. when we're always giving to others um and that's something that I do work I I'm, I go into school and um I don't coach girls I call it mentoring because it I, I find that that age group they're not so able to engage with the the work of coaching let's say but they really appreciate having a sort of more side by side um person for their journey um but we um and we are literally always talking about the friendship dynamic that's um that's the the thing that's coming up for them yeah and that obviously all starts with the internal challenge right and then Mm. what do you what do you feel like specifically with ADHD creates that kind of self-talk and and all that stuff and about that we don't give our own needs yeah I think um I think every every child everywhere well okay most of them anyway we want to please we want to please our teachers we want to please our parents we want to please our friends and I think very early people like me us we we know that we're different and we know we don't really fit we don't really understand why and we don't ever um don't articulate it it's more like a sense and we're not consciously thinking about it but I think we notice we're very quick to notice the negatives and be like oh no not again I've done it again or uh, or I've not or I've, I've not done the thing I was supposed to do again oh what's wrong with you? and we d- it doesn't take much like an, an adult doesn't have to do much for us to feel rejected or criticized by them it could just be a look but we're in, we're internalizing all of that so early and I think I think it's from there that that, that they say um I don't know how they measured this, I can't remember, but um, by, by 12, young people with ADHD, we've internalised 20,000 more negative messages than our typically developed peers. And that can be actual things spoken out loud to us, but it can also be just the things we've thought to ourselves, like, you know, the, the, the negative feedback we've given ourselves, you know, you bloody idiot, you're late again, or you forgot your peak again, or you didn't reply to that message fast enough again, or, or whatever it is. Um, we, I think there's a, um, they say for, for children generally, you have to give them five positives to every one negative that they hear or feel about themselves. For people with ADHD, it needs to be 12 to redress the balance. That's impossible, Natasha, to do like 12, like I've tried, (laughs) like (laughs) it's really, you can't do it. It's, It's, um, we, I think all human brains are for like survival we we are programmed to notice the negative and the threats and so on so it is natural for us to do that but I think that we very early learn to be in a more sort of heightened state scanning the uh the horizon for the next mess up that we're going to do yeah. um and this is all going on inside but I think it begins so early and all the research says that best outcomes are when these when we are identified early and targeted support is put in early. Um, and that's that's so important. And when I'm working with women, I'm always quick to say, you know, these things run in families. If you've got children, be vigilant, you know, notice, look out for, because if you could know these things and live well yourself, that is such a gift to your young, you know, to your children that you can model for them. Yeah, and that I'm I'm massive on early intervention, which is why I work with kind of the younger generation because it is so crucial like I, I I almost say it sometimes that having ADHD is hard but the impacts of having undiagnosed ADHD oh, yeah. is oh. so much harder and what you're saying here like the ADHD brain is naturally you know takes on more negatives you know mm-hmm. uh, 20 thousand if you knew that you had ADHD and people didn't people normalize it, it didn't make it seem that you're weird yeah. and different 
they actually had advantages and what that brain could do yeah I know and that that's that's the it's it's heartbreaking and, and and the school that I go to is an outstanding school it is excellent and the fact that they pay me to go there speaks volumes for how brilliant they are for these young people but of course all the girls I'm talking to are massively struggling and I'm telling them it's it is not you it like this isn't because Polly needs to try harder this is because it's really hard to have this brain in a tip in a place designed for typical people to make them look good. In fact, it's not even been designed for that. It's not even that good. But you know, you know what I mean? Like it's it's not designed with us in mind. It isn't, and that's why it feels so, you know, so so difficult. And um, when I think about all the things that people with ADHD are, we are more vulnerable to. I I, I really. I struggle to say them out loud because it's so it makes me feel so um so sad you know so so sad for us as a group when we have so much to bring that we could be so much more likely to be depressed to have generalized anxiety disorder to be self-harming to have eating disorders suicidal ideation like it's such a long list of our vulnerabilities but if we know we have ADHD then we have a fighting chance right of understanding our vulnerability knowing what our brain needs Give it, you know, giving the, you know, making sure we are stimulated in all the best ways with all the most helpful diet and exercise and, and work and things mm. that we don't fall into um, like uh, very difficult mental health situations um, with substance abuse, with um, very uh, potentially abusive relationships. And it just goes on. There's a, a consensus paper, um, I think it was 2020, that Susan Young um, and lots of colleagues did on, on the situation of girls and women with ADHD and it's yeah. it's tough reading um you know oh unplanned pregnancy oh, like it's oh, like it's it goes you know it's, it's so like so many things um but but if you know I have ADHD this is the brain I've got these are the things that I am more vulnerable to so I I then protect myself or as a parent I put in additional protection for my children yeah. around these things you know and I can hear it. I'm not, I'm, I'm trying, I really try in these sessions not to go into coach mode, but I on, honestly, it's just like part of who I am. I can feel it in your voice. Like mm-hmm. the way you're saying it, it's just so, such a passion. It, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, and I, I, I just feel that, well, because I just think we, so, we have so much to bring and yet so many of us can feel so utterly squashed and defeated. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's just, it's not what it should be. And, um, and I, I will do my little bit in my little corner of the world to try and, you know, make a difference where I can. Yeah. And try and change it so that the people get, you know, have that early intervention and hopefully yeah. make, you know, life work for them. Mm, exactly. Exactly. OK, so we'll, we'll kind of uh, that was kind of like a nice little unplanned bit <laughs> to finish this half. Um, and we'll join you back in the next half where I can't wait to see where else this goes. Thank you. And we're out. If you would like any more information on Indigo Hub or our Indigo support group, then please check out our website below or our link to our social media platforms or email at indigohub.adhd at gmail.com. If you would like to offer any comments, feedback, get support, or if you're interested in the world hearing your story, then please reach out through any of our avenues. As said before, have a positive week. Check in again later. And we're out. I'm back. And every time I go, right, we're not going to talk in the break, but we always end up talking. It's like, right, let's rec- every single time I have a guest, I always end up talking. So let's have a break. Yes, yeah. stop talking. <laughs> but um, it's, it, I'm glad to have you back. And if you wanted to hear before, then please rewind. We we're talking to Pippa Samu about kind of her experience. And then we were talking a lot about internalization with the girls and women. So I'm really interested, kind of, as, as a coach. That, that coaches like specifically women and we've talked obviously about the biggest challenge being the internal thing mm. when what like what is it that you think that is apart from the internal is there anything else that you feel like is 
is why we get missed um i think well i think because we we don't want we, do, we don't want to say we're struggling mm. and i think well i'm not sure the boys want to say they're struggling or not but it's it's so observable yeah. that you on the whole this is not always but generally speaking that i we talk about like boys and men externalizing their adhd and women and girls internalizing we don't want people to know that we're struggling we will literally bend backwards and shape ourselves ridiculousness you know like to mm. fit than than to say i'm sorry this doesn't suit me can we do it a different way like if and i always say to teachers really don't waste your breath asking if they're okay or if they understand because they're going to be like yes I'm okay and yes I totally understand you know completely worthless waste of energy there um we we don't want to admit how much we're struggling we assume literally everyone else in the room has got it and we are the weakest link um and that that can't be true just on sort of probability because at least a few other people in the room have got to have the same brain as us yeah. um and for for many other reasons apart from ADHD there will be struggles in the room but we literally assume we're the only one finding this hard um and we we don't we don't want to say it because somehow we think it's it will be me then it will be a, a Pippa thing not a not an idiot you know it'll it'll be like a moral failing on my part it will be I am lazy basically I just think I'm either lazy or sloppy that's it lazy or sloppy um and it's embarrassing because I'm I I, well I don't want to be lazy or sloppy you know I want to be I want to be good and I I always felt when I was teaching I always felt like Mm. they're going to find out you know they're going to in a minute now they're going to find out I'm quite shit <laughs> like it's you know it's gonna happen um but it, it never did it it never did and actually because I was a great teacher I was a great teacher like why would that have happened but it felt like that and then of course then you sort of find out about ADHD and then you think oh well I'm probably making it up to explain my sloppiness and laziness so you, get, you, get, you carry the imposter thing the, literally the whole way yeah <laughs> It, and even after diagnosis, it must be wrong. Yeah, like yeah. After diagnosis, like, well, you know, poor, I might have just been hamming it up for the uh, for the doctor there. <laughs> you know, it, um, so there's something um, I heard. I can't remember who it was, but uh, an ADHD Foundation conference. Um, someone was speaking about women and girls, and his the first thing he said was, "You just have to remember, they're a girl first before they're anything else. That's it. It's the girl, and it's the girl bit." There is the bit of I I need to fit. I do not want to be different. I will not be shining a light on my challenges. That's he was saying like that's that is such an important part of the the puzzle, the treatment, the coming to terms with before you start to look at attention, impulsivity, hyperactivity, emotional regulation, sleep. Like it's it's this girl piece. I don't know. I don't know enough about. Um, where that comes from I I would like to know more about what what happens as I think it happens really early like this thing um uh and it's it's such a shame I do wonder and there was a piece of research recently it's um in in conjunction with ADHD Europe it's a Mm, I can remember her first name but not her last name a Dr Kate at uh, Bristol University she's done some um some one qualitative research uh talking to adult women about their experiences and what they would wish for their younger self Mm. um and what they're saying is and i i heartily agree is that as as our you know as we are growing up through our sort of academic school communities that the community is educated about neurodiversity so that when we are adults we don't have to explain to our future partners to our bosses to um our classmates what it is to have ADHD because they will know that because they have been taught that in the same way that they're taught about people's different um sexual orientations or they're taught about people's different um learning um I don't know like but 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 this is not taught explicitly um and because it isn't it maybe does it feel a bit shameful a bit like so because it's not addressed in that way like so many things are then I I think perhaps we're left with this well it's it's embarrassing it's shameful to 
to have this brain, this to have these difficulties, um, which is a, you know, shame is utterly useless. Like I can find a purpose for anger or anxiety, but I cannot find, I cannot find no good, nothing, nothing good in shame at all. Like you can't harness that for good. It, you know, it's, it's a heavy, heavy thing to carry. Um, yeah. Yeah. It goes so back to that. Question, but... No, no, that was brilliant, and it, and it's so true that that intern it well, goes back to the internalization, doesn't it? I think and, so. Yeah. And yeah. be and the, the the pressure of, of being a girl and what what that means. Yeah. And and like all the other stuff comes after that, and then mm-hmm. when you've when you've had that your whole life and all that, it's just where do I go? And yeah. for me, masking was such a big part of my identity I almost I didn't really know who I was I got these eight masks yeah where was Tash yeah and that's that's so common I think and and you don't even know that you're doing it yeah. and then you can lose you know lose lose yourself there um and and that's what's so brilliant about well I'm so lucky because I get to work with my tribe all day long so yeah. I can be my authentic self which is it is so uh, liberating yeah. to, to do that um and as well as coaching I have a little um community I have a closed Facebook group and um oh, I do a little online um I don't call it a support group because I hope it's more fun than that but anyway it's a chat I call it a chat group so we do that monthly and then with uh where I live locally we have a we meet either for lunch or dinner each month um oh, and we, I'm trying to do things like to organize for us to do things together so we have that connection with one another um which helps normalize that you know like you know really look how many we are all with this brain um and we learn a lot from each other we've got a lot to give each other a lot of wisdom a lot of tips and also a lot of funny mistakes <laughs> Well, yeah, because that's what it is it like like you were saying there like if it was taught it normalizes it to the point of it, I don't mean it normalizes it to the point of oh everybody's got it but it normalizes yeah. it though everybody's got it's not like this new thing that everybody's got to come the heads when they get older if it, yeah, you know, that's, it was taught yeah. in school it would it would make it so much difference for us it would it would and also it would really um hopefully provide opportunities for those for the myths around ADHD yeah. to be broken down much earlier like you know what I was saying about my son well I'm I'm not like that so I don't have it um because he presented like you would expect um and I didn't I did not realize there was another uh, you know there was a, you know yeah I just and, and he was spectacular yeah. so um yeah yeah I always say you don't know what you don't know right exactly so- what would you say to like girls or women that are at the point where they're thinking that they've got it or like what would you tell them to look for or what would you what would you give them I would say um number one try and connect with other women with ADHD however you can do that wherever you're living so if I don't know you do a bit googling and there are actual in life real people to meet meet them if there aren't then find some online groups not everyone online group might be appropriate but you'll I'm sure you would find something that would yeah. would suit you I would say that would be the first thing um if you were only going to read one book I would say oh it's got such a long title um oh women and ADHD embrace your uh, breaking barriers embrace your neurodiversity it's the Sari Solden and yeah. Michelle Frank's book it's a workbook you don't have to do it like that you can just read it I would say particularly if you're an adult if you've if you've realized as an adult woman that I think reading through that would be a very cathartic process. Um, it, I've, I, I find it really hard to read at, in like real life read. Yeah. I listen to books um, and because I had to do a lot of reading for my um, for my master's. I don't know, I, I just kind of killed you. Yeah. Anyway, I find it hard. But that book I read from cover to cover, like I read wow. it and it's, I felt like it's speaking to me. So that was really helpful. Um, to understand how there are there are a few really simple lifestyle things you could do for yourself that could be transformational like exercise um we need to move yeah. and if we can get our heart rates up every day ideally at the beginning of the day mm-hmm. we are giving ourselves a fighting chance of starting that day successfully and then that success will yeah you know like breed more success in this kind of nice dopamine loop 
And that's possible for everyone. Everyone can put their trainers on and do a power walk. Like yeah. that's possible, right? Anyone can do that anytime. So I would say um, that um, thinking a little bit about your nutrition, there's no like secret formula, but <laughs> balanced diet, you know, making sure you're getting those dark green veg in to make those neurotransmitters that we're short in. There are a few things that you can do for yourself that could just really, you know, the, small changes that can make a big difference and uh, don't waste your time with anything you don't actually love seriously don't do not do a job because someone says that's really good money or that's really sensible seriously don't waste your time you're gonna be miserable do what you love find what you love find what lights you up and if you can't find it make it do it be it basically is what I I would say I love that because it's it's that thing of obviously I'm not going to go into the waiting list for diagnosis I'm not going to open I'm not going to open that radar but there is a huge waiting list and I get so many people that go well what can I do now like it to make those changes you Mm. don't need a diagnosis like I know for me like I wanted to know and and but if you're waiting for it you can make the change because those changes can be good for anyone exactly you're not going to break yourself yeah (laughs) yeah but for us they're essential yeah exactly that so I would say as soon as you feel like oh yeah this is sounding a lot like me live like it is Mm -hmm. and see what differences um you notice by you know by by making those changes I feel sure that you would notice some benefit fairly quickly um so, so yeah, I think that's that's really important. And I know um, people roll their eyes when we say mindfulness or meditation because they're like, oh, as if I could do that with my very busy brain. But yeah. I think mindfulness in particular is so helpful for us to learn as a practice. And, you, you know, if you just Googled ADHD mindfulness, you'd find things you could do, I, I am confident. But the point about mindfulness is to bring your attention to this moment the one you're in right now the only one you can do anything with and not reliving in technicolor that ridiculous conversation you had three days ago when you think she might hate you or whatever it is like you know you're just going or projecting forward about something that is worrying or unknown that you actually still can't do anything about because it's here get back to the moment in this moment what can I do to be my best self I do think that's really helpful. Um, I do own a copy of ADHD. What is it? Mindfulness prescription for adult ADHD. Yes, okay. So badly want to read it. Very Still good. haven't done it, but I'm going to, it's going to happen. It is good. And I, and I, and I, I think I spoke about this. There was a, another episode I did where, where we talked about mindfulness and it was really key because I was my coach when I, about four years ago when I was diagnosed, she said, right, meditation. And I started <laughs> laughing and I was like, no, no. And she was like, just try and I'm I'm I've got a big key value if I will try anything and I will not say I don't like it until I've tried it I'm just yeah oh yeah absolutely so I was like right so she was like just 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 go and see open your mind just go and see Mm. so I was like oh I've got the cause I'm mindful it's like I'm not doing that (laughs) now to this day I meditate three times a day every single day and I don't do 20 minutes I do three to five minutes yeah at one time yeah it's all about finding how it works for us right yeah like that's that's it you don't there's no there is no you know like just you have to you know so so meditation mindfulness will bring benefits to every human being but each human being needs to work out what how it how it works for them best yeah. and if that's three minutes three times a day that's brilliant yeah. that's what, and, and allow that and and embrace it I think is the is, is the goal really so there's a lot we can do for ourselves to live well before we get to the top of a waiting list um mm. you know and, and 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 have a diagnosis um i'm i'm not um uh i'm not uh either for or against medication yeah, yeah. But like you know, but what i would always say is keep an open mind just mm. you know I, I, like you said I don't be like well i'm not i'm not i'm not doing that before you open your mind and consider it and look at the information and consider trying it try it and see if it works for you um I think medication particularly for girls could be a save through school though because so much of school is I'm not interested you know it's it's really working against us so yeah yeah 
and, and it's that thing when when you're in your own environment and you can choose who you yeah. go and see like i like you know we both work from home you can yeah. go and choose who you go and see yeah. you can choose your life yeah. it's a bit different which means yeah. you can set it up for yourself and and i you know and and then maybe it might not have this or it could be an extra bonus but when yeah. you're having to be forced to be in that then it could be a bonus exactly exactly so yeah I, i'll keep an open mind to all of that so yeah um I'm trying to think of any other things that I've forgotten. I probably have forgotten some things, but anyway, hopefully what I said is useful. <laughs> very useful, very, very useful. And it and it is that thing of making it work for you mm. and really trying to, you know, make these things for yourself versus, you know, trying to make it like everybody else. But then I suppose that's the whole definition of what ADHD is. Of- exactly, yeah. Um, I heard uh, Ned Halliwell, who's like one of my faves, um, he was talking about... Um, you know, don't, don't set your up, don't like, so like, don't go to a coach and say, right, I need to be organized. Like that's all, <laughs> organize me coach. Like, actually, no, you just have to be organized enough that you can be the person you want to be. That's it. You don't have to be, or there's, there's not like a perfect organized thing. That's not a thing. It's just, what do I need to do to be at the right place in the right time with the right stuff? What are those things? Mm how can we make that happen that's that's it just yeah. enough to be the person that you're you want to be that you're made to be really yeah enough I like that just yeah. be enough in all areas of your life that's yeah. you yeah exactly exactly um there's some uh, brilliant oh, tiktoks and things there's some great t-shirts you know like we're often told we're too much yeah. um someone's got some t-shirts that are like go and be less go and get less you know what I mean like, <laughs> that's fine you go and be less I'm all good you know, I love that because yeah. we're enough. We're enough. You know, we are, we are perfectly who we are. We're not to anything. We just are. Yeah. Um, but we, we just are. have to remind ourselves sometimes when other people might not see that. Yeah. And, and I think particularly girls, we've heard a lot of that too. Yeah. We're too much. We're too sensitive. We need to get a thicker, you know, you, know, yeah. you get, get a thicker skin, you know, you need to, um, or you're, uh, well, anyway, too too much too and then my my other favorite it's not a favorite but uh is just just do it just do it like this just yeah. do the washing if one yeah. part, like if someone says that to me now i go this is why i turn around and go just be quiet yeah and people go what <laughs> yeah. like, but you told me to just do the washing so you just be quiet yeah like, and they're like it's like do they think i mean what do they think you've never thought oh like if I only could just do the wash, like what, yeah, like know. so helpful. Thank you. That's blinding <laughs> insights, really helping me with my laundry right now. And, um, or, you know, I'll get a planner. I'll get up five minutes earlier. Yeah. Dear God, like, you know, I, I tried that when I was 12. Like, oh yeah, I've, I've been there. <laughs> you know, I I've tried. Been there. I beat myself up about it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's, I think the, the first thing is loving you know you have to love yourself isn't it accept yourself love yourself um and then I think those remarks about just do your washing or just try harder or just leave earlier whatever their stupidness they're saying I think that will fall fall away because the I think our um I don't know our our vibe our you know our I think people will know that we don't need their helpful suggestions you know yeah they can they can keep those to themselves yeah. and I just when people say it to me I just laugh because I've just heard it so much but that's yeah. because my internalization monologue is going here we go again <laughs> like versus oh I need to just do it I go oh I, I, I literally laugh and go oh here we go again I'm just gonna do it my own way you just do it like you do it yeah that's it yeah 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 perfect okay. so wow that comes to a nice little finish so any last thoughts or words that you want to leave us with that if you don't take care of yourself who is doing that you know you need to bring your energy to loving and nourishing the girl or woman that you are that you were made to be and if you can learn to do that literally everything else will be so much better your working life your intimate relationships your friendships understand that you are so worthy and anyone would be lucky and fortunate to have you as a partner as an employee as a as a uh, as a as a student in their class like understand that you have much to bring um and and hold on to that that's I think that's that's the essence of what I would want to say yeah and I, I'm gonna go back to what you said earlier be your own friend 
yeah yeah because because we know how to do it don't we yeah. we know what a great we friend know is how to be a friend so yeah. we just got to do it to ourselves now yeah that's it yeah nice. I think so. thanks so much Pippa. so where can people find you uh so my website is the advantage which is um the add hyphen vantage.co.uk i've got a facebook page with the same name and my instagram handle is the advantage underscore um my name is Pippa Simu. You can find me on LinkedIn um, as Pippa Simu. Uh, yeah, people find me. They're like they will. It's, they uh, there, aren't, there aren't many Pippa Simus. It's quite quite handy in that way. Like it can't be like, oh, is she that Pippa Simu? Yeah, think. yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. like, yeah, yeah, Just, like John Smith. Like, exactly. <laughs> like there's like exactly. a thousand. Exactly. Yeah. Fairly yeah. easy to find. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, find me if you want to. I try to. I try to share really helpful information about mm. girls and women on my platform yeah, um I also do run some free workshops um from time to time I was trying to do one a term um they're quite time consuming so but anyway I do try so and I publish I publicize those on my platform so you're very welcome anyone to join those if they want to nice well thank you and to make it even easier I'm going to put it below in the comments. Hey, <laughs> thank you very much and also, I'll also put that book that I wrote it down because if not, I'll forget. I'm yeah, it, it's a cracker. It's a cracker. If you're only going to read one as a woman, if you felt like you could read two, ADHD 2.0 by Ned Halliwell, yeah, that would be brilliant. the other one. Yeah, that's so helpful. And also not that long, which is also good. Yeah, that's literally why I said anybody now. It's just that book because it's not yeah. that long and there's an audio book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Pippa. I, I mean, I, I always love speaking to people. I always love speaking to you. And it's just just a great kind of you know you're doing your bit in the in your part of the world and keep doing that thank you natasha thanks for inviting me it's uh, been a pleasure to speak with you too nice so in two weeks we'll be dropping a new podcast from probably episode three because we've got some more amazing guests if you're interested in coming on as a guest or you want the world to hear your story in series one then please reach out through our social media avenues and like pippa said be your own friend right because we all deserve it so come back, learn, listen, and experience the world through not my eyes, but our eyes. Why not? Have a great week. Be your friend. And we're out. Dear Diary, as Indigo Hub's process goes on, it makes me stop and wonder. Could there be more for us? More light, more experience, and more ways to see the world through our own eyes. I think this journey will be... Shh. Thank you.